Welkom bij de paneldiscussie. Uh, discussie betekent interactie. Nou, dat is voor jullie als open source aan een stukje niet zo moeilijk. Uh, wat we graag willen doen, dat ik nu in Engels ga praten, dat was ik bijna vergeten. Uh, switch to English, dus een lot of non-Dutch speaking clients. Good afternoon, my name is Peter Keizer and I'm your host for the next 45 minutes to guide you through a panel discussion. Um, you've heard a lot today about the open source, the open cloud, the open standards. You've heard about the vision. You've heard about some practical tips and tricks. You've heard about a real life case and uh, a lot of ideas about strategy, future developments. But what are you going to do tomorrow? That's, I think, the main objective for the next 45 minutes. For you to get you some takeaways where you can start off by tomorrow. Um, I would like to invite the five experts to the stage to take their seats. Yes, please. And I give a short introduction to the experts from five completely different areas. You probably have met some people during their presentations. The keynote, most of you have heard from Margaret Grimberg. Margaret joined us from the States this morning. She's heading up the marketing department. And if there's one person about cloud within Red Hat, I think that's you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. If you heard the passion in my keynote today, I really believe in the opportunity we all have with cloud. Okay. If done right. If done right. Uh, Rob. You joined us from Intel, yes, right. and Intel is one of those mega powers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't even start to pronounce your last name. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I, just, okay. I don't want to make a mess, so mm -hmm. uh, if you please, maybe. Uh, my name is Rob Kipjotakis. I'm a solution architect within Intel, and as such, I help a lot of people move to cloud and move from a closed cloud to a public or open or hybrid cloud. Right. And as such, I've done many projects. And you're in the field of data centers. Data centers are small. Yeah. To use, just small to use. Okay. Dick, you joined us from HP, Dick van Galen. Yeah. Yeah. You're an IT veteran, may I say so? Yeah, absolutely. 40 years. 40 years, I heard you say that. Yeah, it's uh, I'm from the time that computers weren't on Steam, so that's really uh, yeah. quite some time. <laughs> and now they create a lot of Steam. <laughs> right? right. So there's a lot of change, but there's also a lot of things different, and it still remains the same. Yeah. yeah. Well, some things uh, stays the same, but as I said in my keynote uh, this morning, uh, the big disruption, the model of all disruption, is that now it's not only a technology disruption, but also yeah. a business slash governance right. disruption. Right. And that's new for our profession. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next to you is uh, a gentleman, all the way from Belgium. <laughs> and uh, if you think you have a hard job, all the way. he did it. Yeah? Uh, with your company, you made a transition from a closed environment to an open environment. Yeah. And uh, I think that is... Uh, pretty good angle for us here in the large community to understand your pitfalls, your learnings. Uh, and so I think we'd like to hear a lot from you about this. Yeah, let me just say I'm not the only one. No, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, we made the transition um, to an open platform um, because we're already using a lot of open source tools yeah. and we really, really like the approach yeah. Of being able to adjust things and being very flexible. Yeah. yeah. Right. Your company name is, is Lettergen, right? Um, I work for BTR Services, yeah. but Lettergen is the company where we did the migration. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And your name is Vincent van der Kusten. Correct. Got it. Right. And the last gentleman joins us from Accenture. Performance delivered. All yeah. on stage. Exactly. As I have been well informed, you're more or less around security. That's your. <laughs> field of expertise, strategy concerning security? Well, my domain is cloud strategy, ranging from you know getting to know clouds, so cloud implementation, uh, recommendations, and defining business cases around cloud. Right, right, right. right. Okay, uh, let me just reiterate the idea that you guys formulate your thoughts and have your <coughs> questions ready. There are a couple of microphones around the audience. Uh, so. Think about it, uh, use this opportunity, I would say. But let me first ask Margaret, um, you talked a lot about your vision and your ideas about the future and how you sort of be, let's say, the power of liberation 
but still be in control of IT. Um, but for this audience, what do <clears throat> you think they should do tomorrow? What is the real practical tips and tricks you would like to give them? Well, I think the, the first thing you need to really think about is, is what does cloud mean for you and your business? And what are things that you can do uh, in your organization to create a more agile um, operating environment? And is it taking advantage of building a private cloud or taking advantage of a, of a public cloud or in the future a hybrid cloud? But the first thing you have to really think about is how are you going to architect that cloud? And how are you going to architect it so you build in interoperability and openness? And it comes down to, to a simple, simple saying, but it, it really is important. You don't want to be locked in or locked out. So really thinking about your cloud architecture is probably, and your business objectives um, are probably the first things that I would think about. So if you sort out your business objectives, I think that's something not what you do every day, but it's in the back of the mind, at least with people in management positions. Uh, but for these guys, which are a representation from an average Dutch business society, medium size, large size, IT business responsibilities, what would you give them to embrace this open source movement more and more? What, what can you guide them with? How to embrace it, let's say. <laughs> well, certainly a, a safe way to embrace it is embracing it uh, working with companies such as Red Hat, right? So we would do, we do the hard work in the community in working with the broader um, group to innovate, but then we make sure that that's something that can, you can take advantage of from an enterprise perspective. So that's your way of, of taking advantage of open source um, without having to actually have all the PhDs and do all the contributions yourself, you're being able to leverage that broad community through a company such as Red Hat, who has hardened that technology and made it, you know, enterprise safe for you to use. Um, but you also gain all that innovation. Right, right, right. But then that means that they get they, they chat a lot with each other with people from Red Hat. That they have these communities available to address little issues and big issues as of tomorrow. So absolutely. I mean, they can engage in the community or you can let us engage in the community for you. Uh, so that's an opportunity. Uh, we have many customers that we've actually worked directly with in the community to innovate together. If there's a particular business need that you need, we can actually work with you to innovate in the community and bring that back into, um, into the main body of uh, software offering. Um, so there's a wide variety of, of ways for you to take advantage of open source when working with a company like Red Hat. All right. Any thoughts in the audience? Does that help? <clears throat> Usually you want to talk to the people of Red Hat, but then that's the commercial part, but the content part. In my ideas, and I'm, I'm talking to you maybe about, in my early days, I've been around some years as well, and IT or technology was more like a competitive weapon. Mm -hmm. That's how it all started. But that was in the very early days, right? in which people could say, I've bought a fax VMS system, and now I can do this or that. Yeah. But of course, everything is standard today. As I said in my keynote, it has become a business asset. Yeah. And that means that not so much the details of uh, the components are important, but the exploitation in your organization, yeah. what to buy, what to sell, the whole, the whole value chain yeah. uh, idea. That's so, critical. And most IT, existing IT organizations are not really ready for that. No. How to select that, how to translate risk in finance, for right, example. Right, yeah. The time that you could say, this is a bad solution because it's not secure, is not sufficient. Right. You need to say, it's not secure, and that means for this organization that in these circumstances, we have a risk of that level. Yeah, translated in. <coughs> okay, this whole new dimension in the profession. Let me just start trying to get back the business and IT, the, the, the whole alignment of business towards IT. That's that's a topic been around for some time. How does this work in practice? Is the IT man, girl, taking care of business decisions? I guess no. Or or are you? Are you is there any business representation in, in the audience? People who make these business decisions and talk to IT guys. Say it again. I said all the hands are frozen. All the hands are frozen, yeah. <laughs> They're tight. So it, it is a political issue, right? Is it, is it a political issue to have IT as a strategic weapon in your business development? Is this running against walls? It, 
It has all to do with authority. The classic IT organization is typically an organization that makes what is being asked for, if paid by a budget. Yeah. A modern IT organization is making what is needed. Right. So that's a complete different standpoint, but yeah. that's how you manage the business assets. Right. But I hear I heard Margaret saying this morning that because of this whole new open development, the, 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 the control will be back, going back to the IT departments. Is this something which you see happening? Well, that's what I mean with authority. Yeah. But of course, if you are not able uh, to translate your technology in, in business standpoint, so to speak, and just yeah. give some examples, well, then you are in, in problems the next couple of years. Right, right. Cool. You were saying? Yeah, like a practical case, which actually illustrates what you're uh, highlighting here. Uh, we get called about seven months ago by a CIO of like a very big organization. And the question was, I need some help because I need to educate my business people. And when we arrived at the organization, we had a discussion with CIO with all closed doors. What happened was, the business people were buying cloud services from the internet using a credit card. And this went on and on, and actually the organization was a bank. Um, but what happened is, we took in business and the CIO, and we got a, a whole discussion going on. And the discussion was very simple. Business was highlighting the fact that IT did not deliver what business was actually needing. And that's the whole thing, business went out by themselves. So the end result was a total chaotic situation where the whole business and IT relationship was actually really, really bad. So what we did seven months back, we started a whole initiative of first of all, creating a cloud strategy based on what Mark was highlighting, starting with business objectives. What actually do you need and how can we help you? Yeah, yeah. This is basically what we call like IT as a service or like a cloud-enabled enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Right, but then let me ask it this way. Uh, to the IT guys in the audience, how is your relationship to the business decision maker or the vision of business owners? Any ideas? How, how, how is your relationship? This is working well? Is this is this conflict model? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Most of the times. Well, this is for administrators are sometimes yeah. afraid for yeah. system administrators uh, are sometimes afraid for their jobs. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if something is being outsourced, to make your job yeah. Yeah, 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 I understand that. Yeah. And I see a lot of change maybe in the field of uh, uh, jobs, uh, moving maybe from 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 clients to, to technology providers, if you're in the field of technology, if things move. But it would mean that the jobs move up or down the technology chain. Yes, but often outside the company you're working. Yeah. yeah. But then uh, somebody else with maybe some business issues where you really have this discussion on, now we have to grow more revenue by end of, uh, uh, executing these services and you see limitation in the technology. Does this really happen? I don't think so yet. Not yet? No, I think um, what you say, uh, how Linux ends up in the enterprise is also because of uh, Oscar's uh, experiment in, uh, at home with easily setting up a web server, uh, uh, setting up a mail server with how they buy the software and then take it into the, uh, to, into the business. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the cloud platform, I think it's more, at the moment, still marketing for developers. Right. These they have an answers where you could develop on. Uh, that's not the kind of thing I would do at home. Yeah. And it's not a question I, I get yet from the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then IT is more seen as a cost, and then with less cost, the business <coughs> folks are happier. Yes. Right. So I, I have a question for, uh, for the audience. Are you feeling uh, pressure from what public clouds have to offer? Are you feeling that pressure from your business community and from your users, like how come I can't get that from you? Have you been hearing those kinds of things? Yes. Yes, you're, you're. <laughs> Two questions at one go. Uh, that, that's that's the, what you're hearing constantly. You're working in an IT department and the business has somewhere gotten a, somewhere in the cloud built a new website you don't know anything about. Uh, why can you that do that? But that's the, the, the whole reinvention of the IT department is uh, every department where 
I know, and as a consultant, I talk to different companies, is working with this paradigm shift uh, a gentleman from HP referred to. What is our new role? What, where do we add value? It's no longer in uh, trying to beat a public cloud service. It's adding to that. It's, uh, I think that's the new framework of the the discussion you are here. We're thinking about how to offer similar services like self service portal, you know, service catalogs and things like that, so that people can gain access to what they need more quickly, but still have it under your control. And I think that that's it's a, a paradigm that is starting to develop, of, uh, it, at least in a private cloud perspective, is you know, being able to deliver those kinds of services internally to your audience, yet still manage um, where they're deploying things, how they're managing things. And maybe starting to open up the option of a public cloud for developers. Yeah. But then when you want to run production, you have to run it back in-house. So and how do you start making some of these things available? Um, Let me just pull in Vincent into the discussion, because how was this when you sort of moved away from this closed to the open environment? How was these initial discussions with the business folks? Can you describe a little bit from that? Well, maybe the biggest problem is to tell people using something else than what they know is not always bad. Because when it comes to virtualization, it's like, if it's not VMware, we're skeptical about it. So you have to make sure that they are sure that it's okay, that it's stable and all. But it's an educational aspect, but did your, your business guys probably are pretty IT savvy. So they know about virtualization and they know at least have a name with it. Yeah, but, but not that big. Yeah. So. Okay, okay. So, all right. Okay, well, all right. So then finally, yes, here we go. Another question? Yeah. Uh, well, I have a question, but I'd like to, uh, um, to get back to the question that was asked earlier. So do we see any pressure from the business to uh, quickly respond to the, to the business need to, to bring the innovation very quickly to the, uh, to the market? Uh, well, we do see that. Um, and I think... Uh, well, cloud is it's not the solution in itself, but I think it's an important part of the solution. So I think you can create a very powerful, you know, innovation, innovative business solution if you combine the, the cloud concepts also with a more agile uh, application delivery methodology. And if you kind of glue them together, you can build a framework that is uh, very responsive to this uh, urgent business needs. And I think. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's where we need to go, and it's, I, I think that's what's also going to happen in the, in the next 12 to 18 months. Right. Okay. Okay. So, any more issues on this issue? Yeah. The gentleman in front? Yeah, uh, getting back uh, to the question of Margaret, um, how do you deal uh, about uh, companies? Let's say, okay, that example of, that, uh, uh, of your uh, company, you're an IT, uh, my, yeah, you're IT minded, you know a uh, lot of things about uh, what's going on with your data. I mean, you believe that if, even if it's a private cloud, what about companies that are afraid of, of, yeah, uh, of their data because they say, okay, I have here a file, I can't see my data. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I, I have, I have my data on different computers and uh, PCs yeah. or whatever, yeah. or on the server. I don't want, I'm, I'm a I'm a fairly, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, fairly let, let, let me just deal with direct that. this to you on the, on the theme of, of, of course, security. <laughs> I see that is a big issue. Uh, where is my file if I don't see it physically in front of me, if in my own office space, how do I deal with this? Uh, I think we've done a lot of involved ev ev evaluation. Yes. Uh, well, absolutely, you're not the only one having that problem. Uh, a recent survey was done, about 70% of the people that are considering moving to public clouds are worried about security. And one of the big aspects there is, okay, yeah, where is my file? And if my file is somewhere else, how can I trust it? Uh, not me, eh? Other All companies. Any other companies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, like I said, 70% of the people are that are considering moving to public cloud have that same issue. So, the whole point of that, it's only also, if you come to a public cloud, uh, today you basically go to your local ISP and say, I want to have somebody sure in cloud infrastructure. Tomorrow that ISP might have another contract with an Amazon and before you know it, your servers move all the way to the other side of the world. You won't even know about it. That's also kind of a security concern because of legislation. 
for instance, if you have uh, within Holland here, you have the electronic patient uh, dossier. If for all hospitals and so on, if that moves all of a sudden over to the U.S., the U.S. government wants to look inside that data, and that's also something again. Then you know you don't really want that happening, so you want to have the, the mechanism of control of that. Now that's the mechanism that Intel has actually has been addressing for quite a while, and in, in the platform and in the CPUs, you have added different features, things like encryption, things like trusted execution, and for us the nice thing is working with companies like Red Hat. It's because of their openness, not only to you, but also to us as developers, we can easily work with them to get it to enable those features, where with other uh, software vendors we are still struggling to get them to accept those features because they're trying to figure out how to make money out of it. And while it's a basic thing that can benefit everyone, and benefits everyone, with Heritage we are able to implement these features a lot quicker. And it's also a benefit to you, of course, to be able to use those security features. So we're talking about hardware. It's hardware based, yeah. yeah. Because the whole problem is uh, some of the software, if, as soon as you start doing certain security features in software, then it's easy to port somewhere else and you can easily modify security content. Uh, if you do things in hardware, it's a lot harder to break in that sense because you need to have physical access to the hardware. And that's, and that's uh, yeah, it goes a little bit too much detail to me. It's yeah. to depth here, but if you wanted to talk to me about it offline, I can fill you in on how those uh, features work. <coughs> There's one more question down here to the right, gentlemen. Oh, yes, this is about what you addressed the uh, uh, network compliance. Um, the fact that you, uh, data can end up in the United States, uh, but also if uh, under the Patriot Act, if a company uh, uh, has a head office in the United States, then they still can demand data. Yeah. I think this is a big yeah. uh, roadblock at the moment in Europe. So how do you see this issue? What is your viewpoint on this? Uh, absolutely, it's a definitely an issue when, when legislation is becoming not only a US, you just spoke to Patrick Tech, but there's legislation all around the world regarding these issues. The whole problem is, is that right now there is no way for you to control where your data ends up. And by adding these security features into the platform, we can assure you that you can only say, I want this data only to be available on this, this, and this server. So you can control where that server is and where that data is. And if it wants to move somewhere else, it's basically to prevent it from moving because the security signature doesn't allow it to move. Yes, but it's, 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 believe that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not only about where the data is, it's also the, but also the head office. The head office. Yes, if, if a head office is the in the United States, States yeah. then your head office can basically not. Dick, your head office is. It's interesting to mark that perhaps you have read that Nelly Cruz, our EU mm -hmm. commissary, and uh, took an initiative about this subject uh, because the reason is is that there is a lot of confusion about uh, about this element and there is one risk for Europe at this moment and that is because in in the world uh, privacy for example is nowhere else so well regulated as in Europe but the risk we have is that because of this fragmented uh, regulation types of things <laughs> we cannot benefit fully uh, from, from the advantages of, of the public cloud. So my statement is that kind of confusion will be solved on short term. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the Patriot Act, you need to be aware that companies like the former EDS, uh, for example, outsourcing and companies do tens of years all kind of outsourcing in their data centers, etc., without any problems in that area. Yeah. So I don't want to downplay it, but I think it's a temporary <coughs> issue that will be solved. Okay. But so there's also the option of creating a private cloud, right? So if you're uncomfortable with the public cloud right now for a variety of reasons, right, you can still add that self-service and agility to your own infrastructure with the private cloud. And, and in fact, it, it, this is exactly what I mean with the authority of a modern data center. It's not the role of modern IT department, sorry. It's not the role of the IT department saying that's, that there is a problem, but it is their role to say this can be an issue that means this organization and the, the management of the organization, are you willing to take that risk? Yeah, right. That's the point. Not yeah. addressing the issue, but also yeah. bringing the complications, the, the bypasses, the alternatives, yeah. and, and that makes it a new profession to select on an accountable way to choose for either a public cloud or a private cloud or a local on-premise cloud, etc. That is the new role of the modernized IT department. Yeah. 
Right. I have a question down here. Right. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a subject I already discussed with one of the people in the, in the panel, but it also has to do about the legislation. For instance, the Dutch government gave out a directive that to cities it's forbidden to place their data outside the Netherlands, even in the cloud. So, uh, but from the, the people within the cities who are working in Gemeentebestuur uh, and uh, organizations like that, there's a lot of pressure to, to put data in the cloud because uh, when two cities are joined together, uh, they want to have access to the data while it is on two separate servers which can't be reached from another location. Uh, that's, that's creating a problem. Uh, I've heard some other countries are providing a similar uh, directive that they don't want government uh, data to be stored on servers outside their own country. Uh, that's the nearly crucial issue. That's the nearly crucial issue, but the directive in the Netherlands is already out for a year, and most cities don't realize that, it, that it's there. So, no, so or there is already a problem in that area. And another issue is copyright of the data in the cloud. Who owns the copyright? Is that the cloud provider, or is that the guy who so wrote the data? Answer. Who owns the content? The content is yeah. owned by yourself, yeah. by the company. Yeah. Yeah. Why is says Facebook saying something else? Sorry? Why is Facebook saying something else? What is Facebook saying, by the way? <laughs> Facebook says as soon as it's published on their on their system, that's their property and that they can do with it what they want. So yeah. but here we have here, here we have different. Maybe you say in that type of service that they have copyright over Facebook? That you're, that you're giving them, them your data. So they then own your data. So they own your photographs, uh, all your uh, check ins, everything. So you have given you the right away to right the other folks, then it's done. Well, the problem with Facebook is even different because they change their algemene uh, voorwaarden, uh, uh, their policies. Uh, let's say every three months, so nobody knows which policy, policy they agree to as it is right now. So if somebody is putting that to a, a lawsuit, yeah. there's going to be a big problem. Yeah. But I have another of those examples. Same Google. Uh, but, but Google, LinkedIn, it's all the same. Somewhere, you as the content owner has given your right away, and then it's done. Even if, uh, the problem is even if you push the reject button, yeah. nothing's happening. They're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're talking about uh, putting something in the cloud. That's cloud, 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 cloud. Uh, if, if, so if uh, a cloud provider does bankrupt, uh, yeah. what happens to the data? No, that's, that's a good question. That's a good question. Now, let's forget about this other. Let's <laughs> 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 what happens when the thing goes down? <coughs> well, it's, it's a real case. Did, did it happen in your experiences? They send a cloud provider when it broke? This is something that actually happens all the time. You, know, how, you, know, you see on the news that people uh, are. Find or get frustrated with a notebook and then throw it out with the trash and all of a sudden public data. 